What's up, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla Spy, and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to break down some big news involving the markets going into next week. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention 8.1% APY on uninvested cash. Software ends very soon, just about a couple of weeks. Anyways, for NEO, I just want to mention that NEO held support at the 20 EMA very nicely for the day. I saw a nice rebound, especially as we got some good news. Uh, however, we're entering a very, very critical place going into next week as we have this range developing and big news coming out. So let's talk about the news real quick before I break down the charts. Uh, for next week on Monday, it's going to be September 16th. There's not really much data coming out, just a couple of bill auctions, nothing too crazy. For Tuesday, we have some very important manufacturing numbers before the market opens, and we have Logan from the Fed giving a speech. Once again, everything is going to be quite minor. For Wednesday, this is when things get very, very important. We have the notorious FOMC meeting, and even approaching this meeting is going to be very, very crazy. So I can't wait to see what the Fed announces and how the market responds to this. We're expecting the Fed to give us our first rate cut. There's a 100% chance of that according to the markets, especially considering the fact that CPI just came out now at this point. There's no turning back. So especially because we're approaching the election right before the election. Of course, these cuts are to be expected. We're expecting a 55% chance of us getting a 25 basis point cut and about a 45% chance we get a 50 basis point cut. That's going to be very important. So we'll see how it ends up going. Uh, we'll have to just be very, very patient nonetheless. But anyways, I just want to mention that at least for as far as the market goes. For other factors out there, I just want to say that uh, as far as NEO goes, we're just kind of like range bound for the time being. Uh, and the market is still at a very, very big resistance approaching the status. So we'll see what this leads to. So we have the Fed meeting and Jerome Powell giving a speech. It's going to cause some crazy volatility on Wednesday. For Thursday, we have the Philly Fed employment, new orders and prices paid data coming out. So we'll look for volatility at that time. And then for Friday, we have Harker from the Fed giving a speech, which is very important. So watch and see how that ends up going. That's going to be critical, at least for the way things develop. For other factors out there, we also have this news right here. New was awarded a 50% price target upgrade. Uh, this is a great piece of news because, once again, we're seeing many big banks out there who are saying that NEO is a good buy. They're saying that there's going to be a lot of light on the horizon for the company. And they're saying that they have a price target of $8. Uh, they, they're anticipating that there's going to be a lot more upside coming. And they're very excited for what the future is holding, especially as we get closer to uh, the end of September. So very, very interesting stuff right now. Their impressive growth is very, very amazing. But the question is going to be, uh, is there going to be uh, a better amount of, of, of profitability very soon? They are cutting the overall price by over $4,000 relative to the Model Y when it comes to the Envo L60, which is going to be very competitive. Uh, it's going for sale on September 19th. There's a lot of anticipation of that. And we've seen a big increase in their growth overall. overall. So that's actually some good news. But their margins are still a thing that's of question. That's one of the big things that's worth mentioning. One of their main goals would be to kind of scaling things up to help offset that. So having tighter margins, uh, one strategy is just to basically get sales up a lot higher to get them to improve a lot. So I think that that is something that Neo is going for right now. They're prioritizing increasing their sales. Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan have both said that they're, you know, they, they gave very, very interesting analysis of Neo. I think it was Morgan Stanley that said they could also be expecting over 330,000 deliveries for uh, next year as a whole. And for this year, NEO is anticipating about 220,000, which is not bad. So it's great to see this growth, but the question is, can those margins see improvements? NEO is working on that as I speak. So that's, that is a big and very, very pragmatic question. We'll see how that goes for them moving forward. But their main strategy is kind of like scaling up right now. That's what they're prioritizing. And once those margins get better, that's going to be a bigger winner. We have 64 million in volume, not to mention the fact that the short volume is still decreased. And JP Morgan once again gave us that overweight rating. So what do I see for the share price? The four hour looks a little bit more bullish, but there is an issue. We haven't been able to break past that 5.6 area. When looking at the daily, the daily has that 200 EMA. Uh, at the 5.6 area. If we were to break that, I'd be looking for like the sixes. And if this were to reject, I'd be looking for a big move back down to about 5.23, followed by much lower levels. So kind of stuck in the middle. We are attempting to push higher. I do think there's a lot of potential in this, but we'll have to wait and see if that ends up being the case. So watch and see if Neil can get a break or not. That's going to be pivotal for the way things end up progressing. For other factors out there, we also have SPY. SPY, in my opinion, looks more bullish. We're trying to push up for that target of about 
564 to potentially break that high. And we're doing a very, very good job thus far. Now, if we were to reject off this resistance, you know, you could be looking for a little retracement. And as of right now, SPY looks like it could go a little bit higher, get close to 564. But then I'm going to be very careful because, you know, that's the all time high area. That 564, 565 area is going to be very tough to break. And there's a chance that we could see some tough resistance for a little bit of a dip. So every time we hit 565, we did reject, we rejected, 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 rejected every single time. I think we could be approaching 564 to 565, and then you know we could see a little bit of a dip after that before we start to consolidate in this upper range. And then I think we're just going to kind of do that approaching the FOMC meeting, and then that's going to cause other distinct to break out to new highs or maybe even see a dip. So I'll be watching that very carefully, but so far things are still looking bullish. Even for NVIDIA, we're doing a good job. We may consolidate in this 120 area for some time, but there is that gap to fill above and there's potential for that to get filled after FOMC. And overall, the daily is doing a good job at holding up. It looks promising. Bitcoin is also pushing very, very nicely, looking bullish. We're looking at 59,590 is our support. If it continues to break out, we're looking for a big push for that 62,000 area. It still looks bullish to me nonetheless. For others out there, we have, let me just double check this. ES looks more bullish. We're likely going to be going for these highs all over again. I think it might be pushing to this imbalance, which could drag SPY a little bit higher. But then don't forget, that's going to be a very, very tough resistance, that 5650 area. And we'll see how things go from there. For Tesla, Tesla is also trying to push higher. We're trying to hit this resistance around this 232 area. We'll see if this breaks. If it does break, we have this gap to fill. If not, it could reject. So we'll see how it goes. But this has potential. For NQ, we look a little bit more bullish. We could try to push up for this 19,650 area. If that breaks, we will push even higher. And if we reject here, we're dipping back down to 19,225. But overall, we're doing a good job at holding up. And we will see how this ends up going. Um, as far as the QQQ goes, I just want to mention that uh, this is also in a very, very critical place. We're looking bullish, but this 425 area is a tough uh, 475 area, excuse me. That's a very, very tough resistance. I think we could push a little bit higher from there, but then it's, it's going to start to shuffle a bit approaching FOMC. And then that's going to either launch this to these highs up here. Uh, we still have this big gap to fill up here, or we're about to get a big rug pull. We'll be watching this very carefully. But nonetheless, the QQQ does look more bullish to me. For Apple, we're looking a little bit more bullish. If we could try to hold above 223, if that holds, we're looking for a big push for 225. If that fails, we're going back down to 219. And then for a few more, like looking at NEO, we look a little bit more bullish, but we're going to be looking at this 5.6 air. If we do break that, especially after FOMC, then we're looking for the sixes. If this rejects, we could be dipping. I presume we're just going to shuffle for a bit, and then we could get a break later on. But we'll just have to watch and see. For the IWM Russell 2000, we're looking a little bit more bullish. If we push to fill this imbalance, we're looking for basically 218. If we end up losing 214, we're going to be coming down to fill this gap. So we look more bullish to me. For Amazon, we look so so right now. The issue is this resistance is very tough between 188 and 190. We'll see if we break that. If it doesn't break this, we could be dipping. And if it does break, we will continue to push for that gap. So I'll be watching that as well very, very carefully. For Meta, we look a little bit more bullish. If we try to break past like 527, I think we could try to fill this gap. If we fail here, we're looking for 514. I think it looks a little bit more bullish to me if we could try to hold above 524. Microsoft closed at 430, which is a good sign. As long as we continue to hold above that, our next target is going to be up to about 440. Uh, for now, we're going to be looking for this to slowly inch its way up to about 432. And then we'll see if it breaks above that to continue. But we still look more bullish as long as we hold above 430. If we fail there, we'll be dipping back down to about 425. But overall, it's doing a good job. Google looks more bullish, but we're testing some tough resistance at the daily around that 160 zone. It could break that. We'll have to wait. It might kind of consolidate for some time, but eventually it could get a break. So, so far, the majority of charts do still look bullish, but I just want to warn you, we're hitting some tough resistance on SPY and the other markets. And then we'll see how things end up going when it comes to FOMC. So as far as NEO goes, I think that there might be a lot of consolidation that's coming around this tough resistance at 5.6. But I presume we're going to eventually break this. I was saying yesterday we might dip a little bit before it tries to bounce back up. Uh, we'll see if that breaks. If we do get that break, we're looking for the sixes. So we just have to give this some time. But with that being said, uh, I appreciate you guys so much for listening. Please have a great day. Enjoy the weekend. I'll see you guys very soon uh, on Sunday for another update on how the market's looking. Until then, take care and peace out.